We mentioned the hepatic and central nervous system effects of uh, alcohol uh, toxicity. We should also remember there's a cardiovascular system effect as well. When we get to the chapter on the heart, we'll talk about all the various mechanisms of cardiomyopathy or primary cardiac muscle disease and failure. And one of the most common causes is the direct toxic effect of alcohol as well. Uh, alcohol has an effect on hypertension by virtue of the fact that it has a vasopressor effect both uh, directly and, and indirectly. People that drink a lot get a lot of gastritis. They get a lot of pancreatitis. They often get a general damage or rhabdomyolysis to the skeletal muscle all by toxic effects as well. People that uh, drink a lot uh, often have uh, testicular atrophy. Um, women that drink a lot are prone to have a lot of spontaneous abortion. Growth retardation, mental retardation, and birth defects are the so-called uh, fetal alcohol syndrome. All of these are direct toxic effects as alcohol. So let's do a little bit of a review. Alcohol hurts the baby. It hurts the reproductive system. It hurts skeletal muscle, gastrointestinal tract, liver, nervous system, cardiovascular system. It looks like there's hardly uh, nothing that alcohol doesn't screw up. So uh, let's just keep that in mind. Well, let's move into our next class of exposures from personal exposures to medications. And uh, we have chosen to pick out some of the really common medications, very widely used, m many of which are over the counter, uh, a and have a tremendous impact in people who take them. We'll be talking about oral contraceptives, basically uh, estrogen, progesterone uh, combinations. We'll be talking about uh, postmenopausal estrogens and progesterones, hormone replacement therapy, or perimenopausal. We'll be talking about Tylenol, which is acetaminophen, and we'll be talking about the world's classically biggest uh, over-the-counter drug, aspirin, also with significant toxicity. Birth control pills. When your patients ask you, will my birth control pills uh, cause me to have breast cancer, you know the correct answer to that is no. They don't have an effect on breast cancer. Is there a statistical relationship to increased cervical cancer? Yeah, there probably is, but it may not be direct. And the reason why I'm putting a little question mark here is because a woman who takes birth control pills is probably more likely to be more sexually active than somebody who doesn't. And of course, it's the sexual activity that's related more to cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is a, a sexually transmitted disease, isn't it? Uh, the woman will ask you, uh, would I have a great risk for some clotting uh, deficiencies or clotting mechanisms if I take birth control pills? The answer is, yeah, there's a statistical correlation between BCPs and uh, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. There's also other uh, uh, risk factors as, as well. The woman will ask you, if I take a birth control pill, uh, well, does it increase my chance of uh, cardiovascular disease? And probably the best answer for that is probably not, uh, especially if the woman's under 45. But uh, there is some statistical relationship between birth control pills and um, an ischemic stroke, uh, regardless of what age the woman is. And of course, birth control pills have always been linked to these little benign hepatic nodules called hepatic an adenomas. Sometimes the term focal nodular hyperplasia is used. And when you see a woman or a person, uh, or you see a liver that has a multiple benign adenomas, you can presume it was a woman and she had been on birth control pills. Let's move up to some more estrogen compounds. Hormone replacement therapy, greater amounts, basically postmenopausal women. So a woman's going to be uh, concerned with taking these things, and she's going to ask you, will it cause cancer, will it cause stroke, will it cause atherosclerosis? And here are the correct answers. 
Um, there is a statistical increase of breast cancer in women who use hormone replacement therapy. The World Health Organization did a big study and showed that there is a, is a risk. That's something to consider if the woman wants to consider the HRT. Uh, the woman may ask you, is there a relationship to HRT with thromboembolic events? And unfortunately, the answer to that is yes also. There is a statistical risk. It's something that you have to weigh if the woman wants to take HRT. Last but not least, uh, there is some increased in myocardial infarction, uh, especially during the first year of combined HRT use uh, with, with uh, that as well. And I think there's a little typo here. I think we're going to change our WHI to a WHO. So there's a 29% increased risk of uh, MI during the first year of combined HRTU. So unfortunately, when she says, is there a statistical relationship to cancer, blood clots, or myocardial infarction, the answer to all three of these is yes. Let's talk about Tylenol, acetaminophen. Uh, acetaminophen, Tylenol, most commonly used drug to lower fevers, uh, NSAIDs. Uh, it does not affect cyclooxygenate, so uh, unlike aspirin, it does not cause gastric bleeding. Uh, it has a very good, adequate analgesic antipyretic effects, but there's not much of a significant anti-inflammatory action. The problem with Tylenol is that it, has, uh, it, it wreaks havoc on the liver. So there are many hundreds, perhaps thousands of people with liver enzymes and some hepatic necrosis that are associated with uh, in significantly large doses of Tylenol. So as a result, the general recommendation is uh, not to exceed four grams per day of Tylenol, and that way the uh, risk of hepatic uh, toxicity is significantly decreased. And uh, a toxic dose in adults is usually about four times as much, five times as much as say 15 to 25 grams. You give somebody 15 to 25 grams of Tylenol acutely, like in, a, in an overdose, and there's going to be a very, very good chance of uh, hepatic toxicity. Um, and if a child uh, has a fever or dehydration, you should give that child a reduced uh, dose as well. Okay, let's talk about the grandfather of all over-the-counter drugs. The miracle drug, aspirin, has both acute and chronic side effects. Uh, overdose of aspirin, significant aspirin overdose, uh, usually starts out with a respiratory alkalosis and then uh, eventually, over the period of uh, uh, days, hours, days, you can wind up having a metabolic acidosis, acidosis which could be fatal. Uh, the toxicity of aspirin, people taking large doses, is more likely to be chronic. So this syndrome of salicylism is often characterized by ringing in the ears or tinnitus, tinnitus, some people might want to call it, dizziness, headache, mental confusion, drowsiness, nausea. These are like a lot of effects, people taking chronically increased uh, amounts of uh, aspirin. Aspirin inhibits both uh, cyclooxygenase 1 and 2, and of course the great uh, trend has been for it not to inhibit one, but inhibit the other, so it has the anti-inflammatory effects, but not the uh, uh, anticoagulation effects. Single most common cause, often fatal, with aspirin is gastritis. It's one of the most common causes of GI bleeding. It affects gastric mucosa in a very bad way, especially with larger amounts and or chronic usage. Aspirin has also been indicted with Ray syndrome, uh, which children have uh, fatty liver and some uh, encephalopathy. They're usually less than 15 years old. And often these are in children that have had uh, viral diseases like influenza or chicken pox. So those are the four drugs I wanted to zero in on for toxicity. And um, in the next clip, we'll be talking about the general concept of uh, COX-1 and COX-2 inhibition. I thank you very much.